Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, this lecture is part of the advanced mathematics course for um, teenagers presented on unizor.com. Well, probably for older people as well if they're interested. But I was kind of aiming for high school. Anyway, um, this is about volume of the pyramid. It's a very important topic because you cannot absolutely rigorously address this issue of the volume of a pyramid within the framework of the mathematics um, on the level of um, high school. Um, you really need something like integration, etc. Um, uh, however, I have made a lot of preparations to make it to make it as intuitively rigorous as possible. So I'm using the term intuitively rigorous. Uh, yes, there are certain things which are left um, completely outside um, which need to be presented if you want to be an absolutely rigorous presenter. However, again, as I was saying, a lot of preparations were made to make it um, as rigorous as possible and intuitively obvious. So, one of those preparations were related to uh, Cavalieri principle. And this particular lecture will be about volume of the pyramid um, using the Cavalieri principle to evaluate this. The previous lecture was also dedicated to volume of the pyramid, but that was based on the limit theory. So if you remember, I was just slicing my pyramid into individual slice, slices and built little prisms in every slice. That's a, very, that's a very valid approach actually, which will be handy in some other cases. Um, now, this is just a, a different approach using this Cavalieri principle, as I was saying, which in turn is actually also built on the same kind of a slicing thing um, whenever you would like to explain why this Cavalieri principle is actually correct. Um, but again, accepting the principle as an axiom <coughs> allows to shortcut basically all these um, logical conclusions. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let me first um, dedicate a few words to what actually Cavalieri principle is all about. Now, this is uh, a very short description of a longer lecture on Cavalieri principle which is part of the previous topic related to 3D um, uh, uh, symmetry, uh, 3D similarity. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, so the Cavalieri principle was explained there, and I would definitely relate to that particular lecture for a complete description of it. Here is just a very, very brief. Um, explanation what actually this uh, Cavalieri principle is. So if you have two three-dimensional um, geometric uh, figures, for instance, um, let's say you have a plane, you have a triangle here, and you have a triangle here. And let's assume that these triangles are of the same area. Now let me just take a point somewhere and build a pyramid here and pyramid here. Now, let's say I would like to draw another plane which is parallel to this one and it actually does cutting between these two pyramids somehow. Whatever. So, if every plane parallel to this base plane cuts our two geometric figures, in this case pyramids, but doesn't really matter which one, um, and, and the sections are of the same area, then the Cavalieri principle says that the volume of these two geometric uh, figures is exactly the same. And again, to, rig to, to, to rigorously prove it, you really have to go into the theory of limits, you have to slice the whole thing in little prisms, etc. So, we are not talking about rigorous proof of this. We just take it as 
as given, as an axiom, if you wish. All right. So this is some kind of a repetition of the um, uh, Cavaliere principle. Now, obviously, I assume that you know everything about pyramids as far as the terminology is concerned. So I will use whatever the terminology is available. Um, whatever is important is, um, yes, immediately after, in the previous topic, immediately after the Cavaliere principle, I gave a few theorems which are based on this Cavaliere principle, and they are very important actually. Now, um, one of uh, these theorems, and I'm going to use it actually, is um, the following. Actually, I referred to the previous picture which I was trying to draw. So if you have two pyramids, now I'm talking exactly about pyramids, not, not, some, um, not some abstract geometric figures. If you have one common apex with two pyramids, this is one, this is the plane where the base is lying. Now, uh, this is supposed to be like this, right? And you have another. This is a base. And you have the same point as apex. Alright? I think these two are supposed to be something like this. Now, if these two triangles are of the same area, then the pyramids have the same volume. This is a very easy um, theorem, which I have proved in this lecture um, dedicated to consequences uh, from Cavaliere principle. So these two triangles are in the same plane, they have the same area, and they have the same uh, and pyramids have the same apex. All right, so another theorem was basically an immediate consequence of this one. If instead of triangles, you have parallelogram here, and you divide it by diagonal in two triangles, and you have A pyramid like this, then our quadrilateral pyramid is divided by this diagonal and these two uh, edges in two halves. And these two halves have the same volume. And this is the immediate consequence from the previous because uh, obviously these two triangles in the base have the same area because it's a parallelogram and it's diagonal. So divides the parallelogram into two congruent uh, triangles. Okay, so this is uh, another theorem which I'm going to use. So this is just all introduction into whatever um, will be presented today. This is something which you have to have as, a, as your knowledge, as something which you know about and you can use it. Now, um, uh, I would uh, refer to previous lecture again where um, we have concluded using the limit theory this formula that the volume of the pyramid is one third of uh, area of the base times uh, altitude. Now this was done in the previous lecture and um, the methodology was slicing the pyramid into thin slices. Each one of them is presented as, approximated as a prism. Now I'm going to try to uh, derive the same formula using the Cavaliere principle. Now, the proof itself is extremely simple. So all whatever explanations which I'm basically <laughs> doing right now is it, just to basically approach this particular very simple um, uh, very simple logic 
but again it's simple because you have to know everything I'm talking about before that so that's why I'm repeating all these things so right now what I'm going to do is the following I have a pyramid uh, let's say I have a pyramid something like this and again my purpose is to derive this formula what I'm going to do is I will make a construction which will expand this pyramid to a prism with the same base so it will be a triangular prism uh, and the same height so to make it the same height what I will do is the following let's say these are um, vertices now this is the plane beta where my uh, base triangle ABC is lying and apex S is outside so through S I will construct another plane which is parallel to my plane beta called gamma so I'm positioning my gamma as parallel to the beta and going through this point S now what does it mean in particular it means that the distance between these two planes is exactly the same as the uh, altitude of the of the pyramid because altitude is perpendicular to uh, the base so it's perpendicular to uh, another plane which is parallel to the base plane right and the perpendicular which is um, perpendicular to both planes parallel to each other is the distance between these planes so the distance between these planes is exactly as altitude now uh, what I will do next is from B and C I will draw lines parallel to SA that's how I will convert into my, my pyramid into prism so it would be something like this this, this would be B uh, prime and C would be something like here C prime so now now I'm talking about prism which has a base A, B, C this is the bottom base and the top base S B prime C prime so these are all parallel to S A and B prime and C prime belong to this plane gamma so the height of this prism is exactly the same as the height of the pyramid now I have to change this into invis in invisible right because it's on the back now next what I will do I will connect B prime and C with a diagonal now you need a little bit of imagination because this is it. basically this is it I'm almost I have almost finished proving my my, my my formula because what I would like to say is that my prism the area of, uh, uh, of, of the base is exactly the same as the area of the pyramid the altitude of the prism is exactly as the altitude of the pyramid so I know that the volume of prism is equal to S times H right now um, I should use the lowercase s here so it doesn't mix with my apex letter okay so lowercase s is area of triangle ABC and lowercase h is length of SH SH altitude right so I know that this is the volume of my prism 
we have actually covered the value of the prism in, pre in previous lectures. So, what I would like to show right now, that this prism can be divided into three equal parts, and our pyramid S, A, B, C is one of those three parts, and I will tell you the other two. And since they're all uh, having the same volume, uh, the volume of each of them is one-third. Okay, let's talk about this. Okay, first of all, we have to just imagine which three prisms, uh, pyramids I'm talking about. One pyramid has um, apex at C and base S, B prime, C prime. So it's on this side. Another is our original one. Apex it's S and uh, uh, ABC is its base. It's on that side from the left. And in between, I have another pyramid which I can uh, use, for instance, apex as C and base SB, B prime. That would be another third pyramid. So these three pyramids combined together make up our prism. So again, let's imagine ourselves the prism from that side, which I can uh, use apex C and uh, base S, B prime, C prime. The original prism, which is on the left side, on the left and the back actually, uh, which is S, A, B, C. And then squeezed in the middle is the, the pyramid which I can use C as a um, apex and S, B, B prime as a as base. But I would like to show that the volume of all three of them is the same. Okay, let's start with left and right. So the left one is original, S, A, B, C. And from the right, I have C as apex and S, B prime, C prime as a base. Now, they're talking about prism, right? So the bases are the same. So the S, B prime, C prime is exactly the same as A, B, C. Except this pyramid is upside down. It has exactly the same base and it has exactly the same height, obviously, because the height is, again, the distance between these two planes which is the same uh, for, for, for these two pyramids. It's distance from C to this plane or from S to this plane, right? So the heights are the same and the bases are basically, well, they're congruent because it's a prism. So what I can do is, let me just turn this pyramid, this pyramid upside down and position S, B prime, C prime somewhere on this plane in such a way that point C would coincide with point S, right? I can do it. Whatever the position of the base will be, I don't care, as long as the base is on the plane beta, and the C is replaced with, with S. Now, back to the theorem which I was talking about before. You have on one plane two triangles, which are congruent to each other, therefore they have the same area, and they share the same apex. Now, based on this theorem, which I quoted before and I proved in the previous topic, it's, uh, I think the lecture was called Mini Theorems, it was a theorem B. Um, the volume of these two is the same, because they have uh, the same area of the bases, and they have their apexes at the same position, which means they have the same um, altitude. So, fine. So, these are the same. Now, the next thing is, I would like to say that this uh, pyramid, which is in between these two, uh, has the same volume as original SABC. Now, the way how I will do it is the following. Now, what is um, a triangular pyramid if you consider it in different from different aspects now this is my original 
but this is a triangular pyramid which means I can actually take any other point call it apex and the rest I will call uh, a base it's exactly the same pyramid in the, in the case of triangular pyramid any uh, vertex can serve as apex and the other three would be uh, considered a triangle which is a base right so in this particular case my original pyramid I will consider not at, as S as an apex and ABC as a, as, as, a, as a base but C as an apex and SAB as a base now my third pyramid is C as an apex and SBB prime as a base so let's consider these two pyramids they share the same um, apex C and the bases are SAB and SBB prime now this is parallelogram remember we're talking about prism so every side edge is uh, every side face is a parallelogram and this is the diagonal of the parallelogram which means it divides into um, congruent triangles so we have exactly the situation which I was quoting before as, a, as yet another theorem when you have a parallelogram on the on the plane divided in two halves and you have some kind of a apex and you consider one uh, pyramid against another pyramid and they have the same value because again they have the same um, uh, basis as far as the volume is con uh, area is concerned and uh, they share the common apex which means it's the same height so this middle pyramid which is S as an apex and S B B prime as a base has exactly the same volume as our original pyramid S A B C consider it not as S A B C but C S A B which is doesn't really matter right so that's the end of it we have proven that the volume of the right and the left one is the same and the volume of the middle one and the left is the same so everything all three pyramids have the same volume which means that each one of them has one third of this volume and this is the end of it so the proof itself was relatively short it's more of a talking whatever was leading to this particular proof so all the preparations were were made and I was trying to make these preparations as intuitively obvious as possible so the very proof is well relatively short and, 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 and simple so all you have to do is to prove that these three pyramids have the same volume and I base this on the theorems which I have proven before and those are based on Cavaliere principle so that's how Cavaliere principle acts if you would like to prove this um, this formula without resorting to um, limit theory etc but obviously you have to understand that um, limit theory is in the in the heart of the Cavaliere principle anyway if you would like to prove it instead of taking as an axiom well that's it for today and I recommend you to read the notes to this lecture on unisor.com um, notes might be even mm, written in more details than, than I'm just explaining maybe I forgot something but I don't think I forgot I think everything is fine but notes is still very very important uh, to read so I do recommend you to to go through them thanks very much and good luck